In this short video, we're going to review a focused cardiac ultrasound performed by Dr. Gordon Johnson and highlight the qualitative information that a POCUS exam can rapidly reveal. The patient is an 83-year-old female with a pacemaker and history of murmur presenting with progressive dyspnea. The exam starts in the parasternal long axis view. We do a quick visual survey of the anatomy and chamber sizes. As we assess LV chamber size and function, we know that the depth is at 16 centimeters. Using the calibration markers on the screen as a reference, we note that the LV size in diastole is mildly enlarged and that the left ventricular function is severely reduced. The posterior wall and septum only mildly thicken in systole. And the change in the size of the LV from diastole to systole is only minimal. For illustrative purposes, we're demonstrating this using frozen images in systole and diastole. We also note that the EPSS is abnormal. EPSS is the endpoint septal separation and is the distance of the separation between the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve and septum in early diastole. It's a simple method to estimate ejection fraction. An EPSS of less than 7 is normal. In this case, the EPSS is greater than 15 millimeters, suggesting a severely reduced EF. As we continue our visual survey, we see that the left atrium appears to be enlarged. A good rule of thumb is that in the parasternal long axis view, the RV, aorta, and left atrium should be about the same diameter. In this case, we see that the left atrial diameter is larger than the aorta and RV. We also note that there is a pleural effusion behind the LV. We distinguish this as a pleural effusion because a pericardial effusion would track anterior to the descending aorta. Before we move on to the short axis view, we also note that the aortic valve appears thickened with poor excursion and the mitral valve opening is reduced. In the short axis view, we again note the reduced ejection fraction and the pleural effusion. We also see a trace of pericardial fluid. On this page, we're going to quickly review the final views, the apical subcostal and left lung views. The apical 2D view demonstrates the reduced ejection fraction, the enlarged left atrium, and we also see some mitral annular calcification. Using color flow Doppler in the apical views, we note aortic regurgitation, the mostly red jet in the LV, and a moderate amount of mitral regurgitation, the mostly blue jet in the left atrium. The subcostal view is technically difficult, however, we do see the pacing wire. In the subcostal IVC view, the IVC is dilated and non-collapsing, and the last view is the posterior aspect of the left lung with the patient sitting up and confirms the left pleural effusion and consolidation of the base of the lung. In summary, using focused cardiac ultrasound, Dr. Johnson was able to quickly confirm the suspected diagnosis of congestive heart failure, identify a severely reduced ejection fraction, identify aortic and mitral regurgitation, rule out a hemodynamically significant pericardial effusion, and identify a pleural effusion. Special thank you to Dr. Johnson for sharing this educational video.